I'm suggesting more more discretion uh, in in obvious cases. I mean, I, I, I've seen it a million times where where parties are just very obviously using motions to mm -hmm. to delay or to mm -hmm. run up the, the bill or to to so, to harass the opposing party. Um, and I think uh, I, I I think that's an area w which. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of talk about it with Rule 11 sanctions and so forth mm -hmm. uh, over the years, but uh, I think there hasn't been nearly enough uh, done in that area. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as a more general proposition, I think that litigants in, in civil litigation, um, mm -hmm. other than uh, you know, constitutional issues or important civil rights issues, should should definitely have to pay the freight for the uh, for the uh, court process, mm -hmm. uh, just as they would for a private dispute resolution process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, if they had to do that, that and that's one way in which uh, private dispute resolution providers would be able to uh, to compete more effectively with courts. And I think that that would lead to a much more robust. Uh, uh, a private dispute resolution industry mm -hmm. than we have now, mm -hmm. because I do think that the courts are the largest competitor in the process. They are the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very, very difficult to compete with them. And it's particularly difficult to compete with them when they're also offering mm -hmm. these uh, other alternate, so-called alternative dispute resolution services mm -hmm. that are, are court annexed.